No love can ever fulfill us apart from God's love. If you do not find God's love, you can never be fulfilled no matter how deeply people may claim to love you. I'm Torin Jimo and this is The Velvet Room. Still on our series on the life and times of great preachers, today we were talking about a lady who made the word single and married so popular in Nigeria. A tele-evangelist, a writer, and the president of Discovery for Women. She is Pastor Abimbola Rosemary Odukoya. So you must understand that what you must focus on is the inner beauty. And once you have character, you have virtue, you always look very beautiful on the outside. Pastor Bimbo Odukoya, formerly called Pastor Bims, was born on the 12th of September 1960 to Mr. and Mrs. Williams. She studied history and archaeology at the University of Ibadan, where she graduated with a bachelor's degree of arts. She then began a career at the National Theatre in Lagos. She soon resigned to minister full-time, and from 1987 to 1999, she served as the head of the council of the department at the Redeemed Evangelical Mission under the direction of Bishop Mike Okonkwo. She gave her life to Christ as Abimbola Rosemary Williams in 1978 as a student at Federal Government College, Lagos, at the age of 18. After a conversion, she became an addict evangelist on campus at the University of Ibadan, where she met her husband. This young lady wasn't subtle about her faith, as she evinced by her second meeting with Taiwo. How is your Christian life? She asked him, a question that threw him off balance momentarily because at that time he was in his backsliding state. Bimbo wouldn't be put off by his attempt at diplomacy. It's either you are a Christian or you are not. Why should you want to sit on the fence when you can just take a stand and decide? As with God, there were no in-betweens with Pastor Bimbo, no half. She threw herself into whatever service she was called throughout her years. She made sure no aspect of her life suffered, as she still made time to be a mother, mentor to many. She was the host of Single and Married, a television program broadcast locally and internationally that deals with the practical issues people face in marriages and relationships generally guided with biblical principles. She was a well-known conference speaker within Nigeria and in some instances in international level. Apart from being an international conference speaker, she was also an author of several books. Amongst them are How to Choose a Life Partner, Living Free, How to Handle Rejection, Living Free, Overcoming Masturbation, The Single Life, Real People, Real Issues, Wise Counsel, and many others. I will not fail to also mention that Pastor Bimbo Odukoya was married to Pastor Taiwo Odukoya, the founder of the Fountain of Life Church in Lagos, Nigeria. Before her death, she was a receiver of over 60 national and international awards for her contribution to nation building, the development of her country, Nigeria, and the West African sub region, and for her leadership as a woman of high moral standards and a role model to many. Did you know that she was one of the several individuals chosen by Samsung to represent Nigeria in carrying the Olympic torch in Athens, Greece at the 2004 Olympic Games? Oh yes, she was. But you see, this great speaker, writer and tele-evangelist died on the 11th of December 2005. She was part of many Nigerians that died in the Susoliso Airline Flight 1145 crash. Although she is dead, her impact is still being felt by thousands of people in Nigeria and across the globe. In one of our many conferences, she spoke about how to handle hearts. Watch this. demanding your right from anybody 
Let me explain why. If I'm demanding my right from you, it means I have no rights. What I demand from you means I don't have. If I have rights, I would demand no rights from you. What you give me adds to what I have. What you don't give me doesn't affect me. Because I know that it is not what you do that will get me to my destiny. You do, you don't do, God will raise somebody else to do. Bible says give, it shall be given to you. If God tells you to give me, you don't give me, it will raise somebody else. It says if it's a stone, it will raise, it will raise a stone. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I must appreciate people, not for what they do, but for who they are. That's the point. It's not what you do that will make me love you. Because if I wait to, to get you to do what I want or do the right thing, all right, number one, I can't do, I can't make you do, I can just pray for you. But I must know that it is not what you do that will get me there. But when I'm about to marry, I will look for somebody who can walk with me. The Bible says, can two walk together except they agree? The time for choosing your life partner is not your time to change anybody. It's not your time to see how you can make the person become who you are. It's the time to find out, do we think the same way? Do we work the same way? Because I can't change you. I can't, I can love you. I can't make you do what I want. You will only do what you want. But if, if you think the way I think, then we can work together because we agree. So it's a time of discernment. It's a time of focus. It's a time to find out who you are. Can we work together? It's only time to say, because I like the container, I will change the content to be like me. Oh, Father, this girl cannot go, 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 go. My way. She can't just pass me by like that. I like the content. God, Mushepo. Power to change. Power, to, you can't change nobody. Don't be deceived. You can't change anybody. You only, that's why you see, a lot of people reject people, all right, because they're trying to change. I can look at you and decide I want to be like you. If I don't make a decision to be like you, you can never make me like you. So when it comes to getting a covenant partner, now I can, I can have you as my friend, as a casual friend, because I feel that I need to be a blessing to you, because I can't decide to snub you when you come my way. Do you understand? But, if I see that you are not the type of person I can work with because we don't think a lie, you can be my friend from afar or be a casual friend. When it comes to somebody who we're going to work together, somebody who's going to be my covenant partner, I must realize that what you are is what I am. Can two work together? Except they agree. Do you get it? Now, why do we become dominant in our attitude? It's because of control. Why will I dominate you? I want to control you. Domination is control. I want to make you do what I want. If I have to kick you, I will kick you. You can't beat somebody to change. You can't beat somebody, especially an adult. Because you're not the person's parent. You are the person's husband or wife. Do you get what I'm trying to say? If I am a domineering person, my problem is I honestly feel that I can change you and I honestly feel that it is my changing you that will make me a better person? Or is my changing you that will let me get what I want? Because if I don't believe that what you do will affect me, I won't believe I have to change you. She get the point I'm trying to make. So what makes people domineering is I must control you. I must change you. And people are worried, hey, if I don't change her, where will I be? If I don't change her, who cares about what she does or what she doesn't do? She get the point. Why will I be manipulative? Ah, I have to cry to make her do what I want. Or I have to shout. Mani a person who is manipulative is also trying to control you. In a subtle way. Maybe if I cry, she will give me what I want. If I shout at her, she will give me what I want. It's manipulation. Do you get the point? Why would I get into passive, dominary lifestyle, which is keeping malice? I talk to you. I want you to do something for me. I don't want to do it. I feel you've rejected me. You have rejected me. You've made, it, made your choice. You can't reject me. I reject myself. Or I feel you are challenging my authority. You have nothing to do with my future. You, have no, you are not challenging anything in me. But you see, it's our thinking that destroys us. Or we feel, all right, this person has hurt me. If I withdraw my, my talking to her, she will know she has hurt me. Why? I want to change her. I want to control her to do it my way. 
So the person used to say hi too before he says hi. Hi. How are you doing? Fine. Why? You are trying to let her know that you don't like what she's done and you feel that by withdrawing your talking and your friendliness, she will change. She can't change nothing. It's not about how much you try. If she doesn't decide to change, if her mindset doesn't change, if she doesn't start to relate to the one that can change, are you with me? She's not going to change. What do I do when I'm hurt? I go to the healer. Let me tell you something. God has made provision for our hearts. Because he knows that people will hurt us. Therefore, he gave us Jesus Christ. The Bible says we, we don't have a high priest that cannot be taught with the feelings of our infirmities. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, he said he has taken our pain. He has taken our grief. Jesus has taken our hurt. So God has made provision for my hurt. Jesus is my doctor. In Luke 5, he says, I didn't come for the whole, I came for the sick. I didn't come for the one who feels I'm okay. I came for the one that is not okay. I tell people, the only person you can't do without is Jesus Christ. If you want to get to your destiny, you need Jesus. Now, let's talk again about the type of emotions that those from dysfunctional homes go through. When people have been hurt by their parents, when your father makes a decision he shouldn't make, when your mother makes a decision she should not make, when your friends make a decision they should not make, they, it should not affect you. Why do people become damaged in life? Because they allow what people do to make them who they are. They allow what people to, do, to decide the way they're going to approach life. Let me get back to the testimony I was given. The guy that um, was owing this Christian man some money, huge amounts of money, and the man had refused to pay, had been on for a long time. But this guy went to the rock and kept praying. You know what happened? This very influential man called him about two weeks ago and said, I have not been able to sleep. He said, I have not been. He says, every time I go to bed, I know God is talking to me about you. He said, look, even though I'm not the one that owes you the money, it's the state, but I will pay for my own personal accounts because I can't sleep. After I have paid you, they will pay me back because they, will, they know they will have to pay me. But I know that you are a man of God. <laughs> I know who you are. Come and get your check. Stop, stop chasing people. Stop chasing people. Your destiny is not in the hand of anybody. It's in the hand of God. And even if that man is a good man or she's a good woman, how about if she dies, what will you do? Because one thing is this. When you start to hold on to somebody too much, God will remove that person from your life. Because nobody can be God but God. I'm not saying God will kill the person. But God will make that person disappoint you. <laughs> to see who you are holding on to. What is most precious? I'm a generous God. Because if God allows man to be your God, they will, keep, they will finish you. And so God will do things to get your focus off man, but on God. Look at Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. 6, 1 and 2. It says, Come and let us return to the Lord. For he has done, but he will heal us. Now, listen to this scripture very well. Come, let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. Now, listen to me. Listen. I want to throw something in. Every time you are going through trials and situations where you feel people are putting you down, people are humiliating you, God is always in, in, in control. Or God has a purpose for it. When you want to bring gold, you want to make gold, you must put that gold in the fire. You must put that substance that would eventually become gold in the, in, in the fire. If you want to make existing carrot gold, you increase the fire. If that substance that will come out as gold doesn't get into the fire, the impurities cannot come out. When God wants to refine you, when God wants to promote you, he'll put you to the fire. Now what I'm saying is, when things that happen around us, 
and people keep doing the wrong things to us, or situations just don't change around us, and it seems as if the more I try, uh, I pray, the worse my situation becomes, I must understand something. It's not the devil I need to bind. I need to ask the Lord, Lord, what are you trying to remove in me? What are you trying to do in me? What do you want me to, 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 take, um, to take note of? Because you see, the Bible says, submit to God, then what? Resist the devil. Sometimes, it's not the devil we need to be resisting. We need to say, God, let your will be done. What are the issues? If you are praying and binding, and that situation does not change, it means it's not the devil sending it. It means God is trying to show you that there are impurities in your life. And how would I also know that there are impurities in my life? How I react when people hurt me will bring the impurities to the surface. Do you get it? It's only trials, it's only suffering that God uses to bring the impurities out of me. When you do the wrong thing to me and I get angry, uh -huh, impurity number one. Bitterness, uh -huh. envy, jealousy, backbiting. Uh -huh. We're talking now. The Lord is allowing the impurities to come. Bible says, get angry but don't sin. In other words, even when I'm hurt, I can be hurt. But if that hurt passes that day, God is saying, Those are, that's an impurity. Hope you learned some lessons from that message by Pastor Bimbo Odukoya. Well, let me still play you another message by Pastor Bimbo Odukoya. She called this one, Building Intimacy. about love it's about intimacy you want a bond with somebody else we talk about romantic love that leads to marriage or we talk about marriage we're talking about bonding with somebody else so we're talking about intimacy but most of the time when somebody hears intimacy we think about sex but you see we miss it because love is greater than sex but love leads to sex in marriage. Do you understand me? So let's define what intimacy is because we can't talk about intimacy and not talk about love especially when we're dealing with romantic love or bonding with another human being. If I'm saying I want to love a man to a point where I, I want to marry him, what I'm saying is I want to become intimate with that man. So let's define what intimacy is alright, and what it is not. Praise the Lord. Intimacy is all about love. Now let me start by saying this. Because we have not understood what true intimacy is or how it can be found, our culture glamorizes false intimacy with raw sex without close, meaningful relationships or relationship. Now, when you talk about intimacy, you are not talking about sex, you are talking about close relationship. I can, a man can sleep with a woman and not have a close relationship with him or her. What everybody is looking for is closeness. Close relationship. Are you with me? It's not sex. There's a difference between a close relationship. I want to have a meaningful, close relationship with you. That's what we're all looking for. Meaningful relationship. That's what the Bible says, he that finds, in Proverbs 8 22, it says, he that finds a wife finds what? A good thing. Because only a good thing can give you a meaningful relationship. That's what we're all looking for. A relationship that will do me good, that will increase me, will multiply me, all right? Will make me a better person, will make me achieve my life, my dreams. Are you with me? So that is what intimacy is really. It's not just sex. Sex cannot give you what intimacy will give to you. Sex cannot give you what a meaningful relationship. You can sleep with a man and not have a meaningful relationship with him or he might not have a meaningful relationship with you. Praise the Lord. Now, let's define um, intimacy. Hallelujah. Now, it is derived from a Latin word, intimus, which means in most, in most, referring to a state of confidentiality and a deep personal relationship. When we talk about intimacy, we are talking about a state of confidentiality and a deep personal relationship. It is the experience of understanding and being understood. Can you see the difference? You see, when you're looking for love, in the true sense of it, 
you're looking for somebody who will understand you understanding is so paramount it's so fundamental when we talk about love and that is why like i said last week when we talk about love we're talking about verbal and non-verbal communication it's all about communicate you see i can't love you if i don't know you we don't talk and you don't understand me once you don't understand me there's no love and so if i want to fall in love with a man or woman what i need to do is i want to get to know you i understand you in a way that no man or woman understands you because once i understand you i will provide for you that nobody else will provide for your needs i'll provide for your needs in every aspect is spiritually socially mentally intellectually because there's an understanding and so in intimacy you're saying we've got to a point where we understand each i understand you understand me and so we can walk together and that is why the bible says in amos 3 3 says can two walk together except they agree there's no agreement where there's no understanding praise the lord and so in intimacy it is the experience of understanding and being understood by someone who loves you it's the experience we said last week we said um bonding the miracle of discovery love is all about discovery if you love me you want to discover me not discover it's easy to discover somebody physically it can take you two minutes to discover somebody physically all you have to do is remove your clothes and they've discovered you physically it's more than that it's about the innermost the feelings the thoughts what's going on on my inside you can touch my outside but you see it's my inside when you love somebody you're giving the person your heart and he's giving you his heart and two hearts work together two thinking do you get what i'm trying to say so it's more than just discovering the, the physical it's more than that praise the lord you want to discover what is inside hallelujah you want to discover my thoughts my cares my fears my values my goals what makes me take what i can't do without are you with me what makes me happy you want to care for me who are you jesus said to his disciples who do men say that i am if you really are my disciple you should know who i am because you love me more than any other person loves me so you should know me that's what he was saying who who do you say i am hallelujah so if you want to marry somebody you are on the journey of trying to discover what nobody has ever discovered about that person to be able to really love a person in a way that nobody has ever loved a person and to be able to get because you see love i mean romantic love that leads to marriage gets you into having a covenant with that person you give your all and he gives his all and you enter into an alliance that can never be broken praise the lord that way you're saying i want to love you in a way that nobody has ever loved is the greatest kind of love that can be given to any human being praise the lord hallelujah marriage provides the best atmosphere in which such an experience can be attained intimacy is the end product of the time and effort take note of, of those two words intimacy is the end product of the time and effort given by a couple who wants who wants to remain in love with each other for a lifetime and therefore they must give time and efforts and we said last week love is a process if you want to really be intimate with anybody you need time you can't rush it you try to rush it in six months you cannot attain intimacy in six months no matter how much you try to it's not possible because it takes more than six months to be intimate with somebody. It's a process. I can't rush a child to grow up. I can't give it to people and say, well, because I want you to grow up, in six months, you have to become a teenager. It can't work. That child must go through the natural process. By the, at least it must be about uh, 13 to start being a teenager. 13 years. But we want to do it in six months. I'm not saying you have to go for 13 years. But I'm trying to make you see you know uh, how we try to rush things that cannot be rushed there's some things you can't rush they must take that the, part, the the process and the time tell people call for at least two years ah two years it's too long you, 
people, that's why you are, we are having broken relationships. Because people have not bonded, bonded at all. All they've just done is sleep, 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 and then six months they marry, and they expect the miracle to happen, and they have a good marriage. That is why every marriage is falling, because people didn't take time to bond well. They didn't take time to be intimate. They didn't take time to, to, to allow the love process to take its, um, its turn if actually they were really in love. Or maybe people call love was lost or just attraction at first sight. Oh, I just fell in love at first sight. Let's marry fast. Hallelujah. You got attracted. You just started. You, you, you got into the, the, the beginning of the love process. Do you get the point? Let's go. Hallelujah. Now, intimacy progresses through several stages. From stranger to an to acquaintance, then to friendship, to casual friend, friendship, close friendship, and then intimacy. You meet a stranger, the person becomes your companion, from a companion to a friend, from a friend to a casual friend, from a casual friend to a close friend, from a close friend to an intimate friend, and then you go into marriage. But what people do is stranger to intimacy and marriage. <laughs> Once the feeling starts to feel. Once they start to have a feeling that, that they have never had before. What is love? A feeling that you feel. When you have a feeling that you never had before. So once I feel that feeling, time to, time to marry. Straight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We can define an intimate relationship as one in which trust and honesty are evident in an atmosphere where both parties do not fear undue criticism of their thoughts, feelings and worries where there's intimacy there's trust and it takes time to trust somebody <laughs> it takes time you see time trust takes time to build trust and honesty it takes time to know if the person is honest or not it takes time to really know who is true he that finds you see you have to take time to find what God is saying is, it takes time to be able to discover who is a wife material or husband material. And you are the one that's going to do the finding. There's no shortcut. Speak to me, Lord. Let me just pray and, let me just pray and hear from you. No, you have to, he said, he that, he, he that hears a prophecy, he that sees a vision. There's a finding process. Even if you have a prophecy or you, I mean, you, you, if somebody gives you a prophecy or you have a dream or you have a vision, there's still time to prove and test that dream. That's why it says, he that finds. A wife finds a good thing. Hallelujah. There's a finding process. Welcome back. I'm Toen Jimo, and we are still looking at the life and times of Pastor Bimbo Odukoya right here in the Velvet Room. That's all we can take on today's edition of the Velvet Room. But before I go, I would like to leave you with a quote by Pastor Bimbo Odukoya. She says this, stop looking for the right person. Focus on being the right person. I say that again. Stop looking for the right person. Focus on being the right person. Thanks for staying tuned. My name is Toyin Jimo and always, always, always remember that there is a seed of greatness in you. Bye-bye.